This bus is my 2004 Thomas Freightliner. It's 29 feet long. It's got the Mercedes MBE 900 series or the OM906LA. Today I'm going to show you how to do an oil change and we're going to look over a few things about this particular engine. One of the common things with these Freightliners, according to a friend of mine, Eli, is that uh, there's a connector down here, a crossbar, that causes this entire structure to break. It's the spring lever that helps you open this easier. In my case, you have to hop up here and muscle it, like so. But by uh, not having that bar in there, you don't have the issue of the spring-loaded uh, bracket actually breaking your entire hood. The MB900 series, or in this case the 906, it's a straight six Mercedes engine. It was made by Detroit Diesel, so the parts are very common and readily available in the US, though there are fewer places that carry this compared to something like um, the 7.3s or the Cummins variant. It has a turbo right here, alternator, there's your oil, which is going to be a cartridge filter, and uh, there's a few things I'm checking on on this bus right now. I just ran the engine so that it would be warm enough to do an oil change. And one of the things I noticed um, is that there's a lot of resistance on the fan. This has a thermal fan clutch. Uh, so what happens as the engine gets to operating temperature, um, it will engage the fan. Well, in this case, it's actually very well engaged right now and always, even though the engine never got to temperature. So that's something that I'm gonna have to take a look at and probably replace uh, that whole assembly in there. So the fan will come off and I replace the, the fan clutch. That's going to give the engine quite a bit more power. I've got a couple things that I've been re resolving on this bus. Um, this one here's got some power steering fluid leaks and here and here. So I'm going to dive into that at some point. Uh, looks like this mic could be replaced as well. Uh, this has got the cover off of it and these are the injectors. These injector lines had an issue and these were not, have not been updated. There's new ones that have some damper, damper on there that apparently makes them more reliable. These were prone to leaking apparently. This particular bus is 210 horsepower. This had factory AC, but um, the, the clutch has been bypassed and basically a smaller fan went onto there and that resolved that. In fact, there's the part number if you wanna take a look. Okay, I've done a bit of prep for this. I do not like using a five gallon bucket, but in this circumstance, I've got to do it. So what you're gonna need is an Allen wrench. I'll try to get the proper size so you'll know. Put it in text, but uh, that's gonna go right there. I'm using this as a, little, as a little cheat to break it free. This does not need to be super tight, but uh, whoever did this last made it super tight. Wow, I'm gonna get a bigger wrench. Get this out of the way. I'm back with a larger wrench this time. See if we can manage. Now when doing this, make sure your Allen is the correct size and then it's better to have kind of a swift knock than a slow pressure. Oh, well that was terrible. Now this is the part where we get the oil bath. Try to keep it all in the bucket. I have not opened up the oil fill up top which will relieve some pressure and make it flow better. But hopefully this will be controlled well enough. As I get to the end, I just keep pressure on it. I'm, I'm free of the uh, threads right now and uh, if you drop in the bucket, cool, but let's try not to.
that's going to flow. And once it slows down a bit, I'll tuck the bucket under so it'll catch all the drippings. Set this guy to the side. And if you fill up too much, you better cover it back up. Be ready to do that. I was not ready. Well, man, I spilled a few drops over, but now, um, yeah, I gotta make this not a mess now. Let's see. Pull this back a hair, put a wrench underneath it to level it while I go get a solution. This is actually my first oil change on this bus and while I've done a lot of oil changes, I underestimated how much this had. In fact, I just guessed that it was gonna be under five gallons. Clearly that's not the case. So now, I'm probably gonna spill a little bit. All right, little bit of problem solving. And uh, look, I try not to make a mess, but eh, that's how it went. Now when I'm doing this on the road, I always have two of these empty containers that I use so that I can work out what I'm gonna work out right now. Yeah, I've got my snow boots on for Florida. We got down to 30 degrees last night. It's getting pretty serious. So this is going to be a mess because I, uh, I made a clerical error. But this time, I'm gonna get a sample to get an oil analysis, which I'll explain in a bit. So I'm gonna get this back to flowing. Taking out the plug again. And I don't wanna get any contaminants in here. Like say I put it into the bucket, then I bu dumped it from the bucket into here. It's just better to, to get it straight from the source. So, there we go. Now I have an oil sample, which I will send out for analysis. Okay, we're gonna install an easy oil drain valve. I've been using these for a couple years, uh, three, four years now. I've got it on my shuttle, 7.3 and uh, I'll show you how this works. We can let this drain for a long time, but the sun's setting, so I'm gonna expedite this a little bit for the sake of video. I'm actually parked at a ideal angle, so it's tilted back towards this corner anyways. Two of those parts went right together, just like this. They have O-rings sealing them together, so Looks like this one is just as simple as turning it, snugging it down. Had some issues with the easy valve, so I'm doing a little bit of testing. I'm gonna put some oil in there, and with that easy valve secure in place, make sure it doesn't leak overnight before I fill the entire thing. We'll get back to that tomorrow. Unfortunately, the easy valve parts I got didn't work, and after seeing it didn't look correct, 
I added some oil overnight to confirm my suspicion, and sure enough, it had a small leak. This meant reinstalling the original drain plug with a new crush washer. Most of the time you can reuse the old crush washer, but I went ahead and got a new one anyways. If your drain pan was large enough, you could let it drain while removing um, the old oil filter and installing a new one. This engine and most Mercedes engines have cartridge filters which can be accessed from the top. I'm a big fan of this style filter. Use a 36 millimeter socket to remove the filter housing, pull the old filter out and drop into a bag. Uh, also get the old o-ring out of there. Install new o-ring which is easier with two hands. Install the new filter into the housing and then screw Screw it back into the engine by hand and then with a socket. Make sure you don't over tighten this. I did the rest of this off camera because it got busy and about a month went by. But what you're going to do in the last step is pull that uh, cap there and you're going to put in about seven gallons of oil. At that point, you want to run the engine for a little bit, turn it off, and then start checking your dipstick to make sure that you have enough oil. If not, then you're going to add a bit more. Probably going to be about seven and a half gallons as that is the capacity of this engine. While this video is not designed to be an infomercial for the easy valves, I think you can see why it makes a lot of sense. Uh, for people who are traveling full time on the road, you're able to pull up to an auto zone or something, purchase the new oil. Again, you're gonna have your old two and a half gallon jugs. Slide them underneath, open the valve until the two and a half gallon jug's full, remove that jug, put another jug in, unload that, uh, fill that one up, and now you've emptied the bus without a mess. You've got complete control over the flow of the oil. Then you can do all the other, all the other steps. Very simple for an oil change. And with a cartridge filter up on top, like on these Mercedes engines, it's a wonderful thing. As I continue working on this engine and this platform, I am going to do some more storytelling, telling some of that. Uh, you'll see some part numbers below in the description, make it a little easier for you to get these parts. Uh, that's something that's oftentimes super difficult to find for some reason online. If you go to a Freightliner dealer, it's pretty simple. But I will be doing some more videos on oil changes and basic maintenance for the different platforms because there's only so many engines and transmissions. And uh, I'll be doing that as I go. If you have anything specific you'd like to see and I'm able to do it, I'd love to make that happen. So put it in the comments below.